Now, one of the reasons why some people haven't signed up to receive COVID-19 vaccination is that they're worried that there might be a known long-term side effects that will show up months or years later. So if you like this video, please click subscribe, like, and the notification bell to be updated for new videos to be uploaded every week. Although it is true that there are still a lot of things we're learning about the vaccines, like how effective are they against the variants and how long their protection lasts, there are still plenty of things we do know that gives experts the confidence in the long-term safety of these vaccines. While concerns about the long-term effects of the vaccines are legitimate, it is important to be aware that the organized anti-vaccine industry has targeted this issue as a way to sow doubt and confusion about COVID-19 vaccines. Patients of mine have received viral messages, WhatsApp messages, asking them to refrain from getting the vaccines because of chips, because these vaccines will destroy their DNA, encouraging instead these patients to use products to protect against COVID-19, including drugs like ivermectin, which we know has not been proven to protect patients against COVID-19 infection. What's known about the short-term effects of the vaccine is that these authorized COVID-19 vaccines, almost all of them, have similar short-term side effects. And these side effects typically occur within one to two days after the vaccine. Most of the patients have already received probably the first or second dose, and they have noticed some form of headache, muscle fatigue, weakness, and even chills and fever. And this can be pretty normal to feel the symptoms because they can be unpleasant at times, but it's actually a good sign because it means that your body is in the process of generating an immune response to the vaccine. History also tells us that severe side effects, if they do occur, which they occur very rarely, usually happens within the first two months after given the first dose. In fact, the most recent example of this phenomenon is the Johnson & Johnson, including the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccines, which were put on hold when health officials learned that there were a small number of people who received the vaccines that experienced serious blood clotting problem. But of note of the different several millions of people that have already received these vaccines, regulators investigated a handful of these patients and found that in the end, all these cases in terms of blood clots emerged within two weeks of vaccination. And upon reviewing the information of the different cases, the in, uh, European medical agencies and the FDA finally have realized that the benefits of the vaccine continue to outweigh the risk. The risk of blood clots, once you get COVID-19 infection is so huge compared to the risk of these COVID-19 vaccines. So history shows that this is really a common pattern. So when new vaccines are released, the unknown side effects usually occurs within two months of the vaccination. So it goes back even to at least the 1960s with the oral poly vaccine. Now, because of this, scientists and public health officials continually monitor vaccine data before during and after a vaccine becomes available to the public. Suffice it to note that these COVID-19 vaccine technologies have been studied for years and used in other treatments without issue. Let's look at, let's say, the inactivated virus, which is being used in the Sinovac vaccine. Inactivated virus is the same technology that we're used to because of the flu vaccine. 
and we've been using flu vaccines to all our patients with chronic conditions without any problems. So we're pretty safe with the use of Sinovac because it's an inactivated virus technology that we know of. But now we also have AstraZeneca. Now we also have Pfizer vaccines. And of course, these mRNA vaccines from Pfizer are very efficacious, but they're pretty new technology. So with mRNA viruses, instead of introducing the body to an inactivated or weakened version of the virus, a piece of it temporarily turns the body cells into tiny vaccine-making factories using the synthesized versions of something called mRNA. This instructs the body to make the spike proteins that SARS-CoV-2 uses to enter the cell. It, in turn, stimulates the body to make long-lasting antibodies to the virus. Now, to ensure that no protein is made in quantities greater than needed, the mRNA has a so-called poly-A tail. In the cytoplasm, this tail ensures mRNA decay. What does it mean? It slowly dissolves on its own. So that as mRNA is used to make proteins in the cell, the length of this poly-A tail decreases until it is too short for the mRNA to continue being used as a protein blueprint. So once this happens, the mRNA then breaks down and is removed as cellular debris. So this process therefore limits how long the mRNA remains in the cytoplasm and ensures it does not stay in the cell longer than it is needed to generate immunity. It is therefore unlikely for the mRNA COVID-19 vaccines to alter the genetic information. Why? Because the mRNA in the vaccine does not enter the nucleus of the cell where the DNA is stored, and it degrades rather quickly in the body after it serves its purpose. Suffice it to note for those who are getting the Pfizer vaccines that researchers have been studying and working with mRNA vaccines for decades being used before for influenza, uh, Zika, and rabies. Beyond vaccines also, cancer research has used mRNA to trigger the immune system to target specific cancer cells. The question among many is, we don't know the long-term effects of these vaccines. Well, that's always the case with new vaccines. But suffice it to note that vaccine side effects usually occur within the first couple of months after vaccination, which is why the FDA insisted on two-month safety data before authorizing them for public use. So adverse reports so far since then since the emergency use authorization worldwide have not detected any patterns of death that would indicate the problem with the vaccines. Yes, many were alarmed by the reports from Norway that 23 people had died shortly after receiving the Pfizer vaccine, but investigations have not shown that these deaths were direct results of the vaccine. Now, similarly, you may have heard of some patients probably died after a Sinovac or AstraZeneca vaccination. Now remember, the priority list for our vaccinations are the diabetics, the elderly, the obese, those with cardiovascular disease. These are some sick people who will probably have had the problem of sudden cardiac death or stroke, regardless of whether they received the vaccine or not. So my point is, with millions of people being vaccinated, and thoroughly investigated, there is no way that the vaccine has a causal effect on death. Most likely, it's coincidental. Meaning, had it not been given the vaccine, there would have been no issue if the patient suffered a sudden cardiac death. But since the patient was given one day or two days before the sudden cardiac death of a certain vaccine, we tend to blame the vaccine. So investigations with regard to death right after or several days after vaccinations have not been proven to show a causal relationship with regard to the death and the vaccine. So if you look closely at the different COVID-19 vaccines, 
the other vaccines available in the country is the AstraZeneca. And the AstraZeneca vaccine is a viral vector vaccine that uses a modified version of a different virus to deliver instructions that teach cells how to fight the coronavirus. So in the case of the COVID-19 case, it's the adenovirus, which is the common colds and flu-like symptoms. It, is mod it was, however, modified so that it can enter cells but can't replicate or cause an illness. So scientists, actually, this is not new technology because viral vectors have been there since 1970s and they have been studied for genetic therapy and cancer treatment. In fact, some vaccines recently for Ebola outbreaks have used the viral vector technology. And studies have focused on viral vector vaccines against other infectious diseases like Zika, influenza, and HIV. So for those of us who are so worried about long-term side effects because most of these vaccines have probably been produced rapidly, I want to assure you this. The vaccine development process from clinical trials to ongoing monitoring do help uncover and understand side effects because clinical trials are a key part of vaccine development and involve evaluating use in tens of thousands of study participants. Now, all of the COVID-19 vaccines went through this rigorous process before emergency use authorization. So in reviewing the results from the trials, the FDA must determine the known potential benefits should outweigh the known and potential risk of the vaccine. So after the vaccines are authorized and used by the public, public officials are urged to continue monitoring data as an additional safety measures. They will plan to report follow-up data, including any events such as hospitalizations and deaths, and they must continue research to generate more data on the safety and efficacy. So in short, for my patients who are really worried about the long-term side effects of COVID-19 vaccines, please be aware that there's good news because the possible long-term side effects, if they do occur, we should have seen them within the first six weeks of a dose. So far, we have not. That's why it is the FDA that insisted that each of these vaccines that being given to people must be studied for at least two months after the last dose, knowing that based on history of vaccinations, serious side effects almost always occur within six weeks to two months of getting the dose. So although some of these effects are long-term, like polio and narcolepsy, they still were picked up within six weeks. So my own opinion is in the pre-approved studies where the vaccines that have been tested in tens of thousands of people, you can therefore clearly say with confidence that there wasn't a relatively uncommon serious side effects, nothing. And now that the vaccine have been given to more than 10 million people worldwide with clear cut real world data in terms of efficacy and preventing death and hospitalization. I think you can say with some confidence that there doesn't appear to be right now any rare serious side effect that would be something that would cause a long-term problem. Nothing to alarm us or a signal that there may be something long-term to harm us. But again, we need to be humble. We need to keep our eyes open and look what happens as we vaccinate more people. Fortunately, there have been no reports of any additional problem with regard, except that these vaccines are very efficacious in protecting our people against COVID-19 infection, in protecting our people against COVID-19 serious events in terms of hospitalizations and death. Again, thank you very much. I'm Dr. Jerry Tan. I hope to see you again in my future video.